Okay, no, this is ridiculous. Come on. Hey, yo, time to get up. Wait, wake up. What happened? Look at you. I used to think you were really going to be something special. What day is it? More like what year is it? It's 2020, dude. Oh. Well, Happy New Year. Yeah, you're, you're off by about six and a half months, man. It's mid-June. Are you serious? Come on. Yeah. And you haven't uploaded since November. People literally think you died. It's been a hell of a year, so I can't blame them. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. Remember that time you accidentally set the woods on fire? And then you ran the lawnmower into the pool? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Why? 2020 has been worse than that. How? Huh. Let's see. Uh, towards the beginning, Australia was on fire for a little bit. Oh, no. Not the koalas. Uh, World War III almost started. What? Uh, there was a global pandemic. Pandemic? You mean like the bird flu? Uh, swarms of locusts in Africa. Yeesh. Sounds biblical. Murder hornets for a little bit, but they kind of went away fast. What in God's name is a murder hornet? A lot of mysterious plane crashes in Iran. Oh, lovely. Black Lives Matter is back. Really? And so is Antifa. Eh, well, it was an election year. And I think the country's just about on the verge of a civil war. <sighs> you weren't kidding? Yeah, dude. It's been a dumpster fire of a year, and you've been asleep for all of it. I think people need us right now, man. Now more than ever. Hey, how did you get in my house anyway? Oh, uh, the, the window was open. I don't just leave windows open. Well, it was, it was open after I broke it. <sighs> Alright, come on. Let's get you, let's get you cleaned up. No, don't touch me. I, I got it. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day so far, and welcome back to another episode of Chuck's Customs. Before we even really get into this episode, I just want to go ahead and apologize beforehand if the audio quality is kind of crappy compared to previous episodes. Reason being, the last setup I had was able to use an external microphone, but unfortunately, with this setup that I have, it doesn't have a headphone jack, so I can't use the external mic, so the sound quality might not be that great. So, again, I apologize in advance. I am working on getting a fix for it, and hopefully that'll be in by the next episode. Also, big news, you probably noticed the background is a little bit different, because I got a new shop! Well, not really a new shop. You see, last December, I actually sold my house where all of the previous episodes were filmed. And then in February, I ended up buying this place, which has a bigger two-car garage. Isn't it glorious? Just so much more space. All my tools are lined up, and I still have plenty of room to walk around. So since February, I've been working on doing a lot of renovations inside the house, getting the garage all set up, and just working a full-time job. So it goes without saying that even though 2020 has already been crazy enough, my 2020 has been very busy as far as getting the house done, getting situated, and now finally being able to make YouTube videos again. And also one last thing before we get started, I have ordered merchandise. It is on the way and it will be available for you to order by the time the next episode comes out. We're going to be starting small, it's just stickers and magnets for now, but hopefully with the sale of those small things, we can work our way up to big things like t-shirts, hoodies, hats, and stuff like that. So those will be in the next episode, as well as the website where you can purchase them. So without wasting any more time, let me give you an update on Bessie. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> Isn't she looking just as gorgeous as ever? So if the GPS speedometer that I ordered off of eBay is at all accurate, which it seems pretty good. From the last time you've seen her, I've been able to put about 1,500 miles on her. And 
every single mile has put a smile on my face. But as you can see, a few things are a little bit different from the last time you've seen her. So let me give you a walk around, quick little 1500 mile update and show you what I've done since the last time you've seen it in November. So to start with the most obvious of improvements, I was able to finally put these doors on that we started working on a long time ago. Ended up finishing up the bodywork that we had started. Uh, put a patch panel in the floor that I actually got out of a truck in the same junkyard where I got the doors from. And actually, I don't think this was closed in at all uh, on the last episode. I'd have to go back and check, but I did finish up buttoning up the firewall. Yes. It does look like Frankenstein's monster, but it gets the job done. This is not meant to be a show truck. This is meant to be something to have fun with. And as I mentioned before, we got the little GPS speedometer from eBay. I think it was like 40 bucks. I think those GPS speedometers are made for boats, but quite frankly, I plugged it into the power source in the truck, put the little GPS module right here on the dashboard, and it works just fine. So far it seems pretty accurate within about two to three miles per hour. So I can't complain. Uh, for the $50 investment, it works pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty much it for inside the cab. So let's go ahead and show you what's done under the hood. So as you can see, the paint job is actually holding up really well. Uh, if you're driving it when it's wet out, the fans pick up the moisture and kick it all over the black valve covers, but that's not a big deal. Uh, the only real issue that I've come across is this fitting kept coming loose. So if you were holding it at, you know, heavy RPMs for too long, then this fitting would just pss, pop off. But I have since brazed a few little knobs on the end, so now these clamps can actually get a good grip on it. Uh, and the only other thing is that the tensioner is a little bit wobbly. I think it needs a new tensioner or at least new tensioner bearings. But because of that, it causes the belt to ride kind of off to the side, hanging off the edge of the tensioner a little bit, which then causes bits of belt to get all over everything. So that's one thing that I need to address but not the end of the world. Uh, the Cerakote on the alternator is fantastic. The Cerakote on the exhaust manifold, however, it's, uh, it's seen better days. It's reached a point where it's starting to flake. I think that the stuff that you're supposed to bake on is better than the air dry stuff, but honestly, I just don't know. That exhaust manifold gets so hot I don't know if you can really paint it with anything that will last for a very long time. But in terms of that, compared to regular paint, that Cerakote has held up amazing for 1,500 miles. And since we're talking about the exhaust, as you can see, it no longer dumps out by the passenger side fender. Instead, I have wrapped the downpipe, brought it down, and now it goes straight back. And she now has a 4-inch exhaust pipe that goes all the way back to the axle and just kind of dumps out. It, uh, it quieted it down quite a bit as far as inside the cab. I mean, it's still a straight pipe 12 valve Cummins with a 4 inch pipe. But at the end of the day, it makes the inside of the cab a lot more comfortable and just makes the truck that much more drivable. And last but not least, I'd like to give Bessie some props because I have not done a single oil change like I said, this is 1,500 miles, and that has got to be the cleanest oil I have ever seen come out of a diesel, especially a 12-valve Cummins. Gorgeous. Along with all that stuff, I went ahead and replaced every bearing, bushing, and tie rod end on the front side of the truck. She's got new calipers, new discs, new bearings, brand new brake hoses, brand new proportioner valve, everything's brand new. So basically, aside from the frame and the rear axle, everything in the front of this truck is brand new. The Hydro Boost works perfectly as it should, transmission still shifts great, the clutch is nice and responsive. Uh, all in all, I would say it's a 99% success. The only reason I leave out that 1% 
is because this front passenger side brake, after you drive it for about 10 to 15 miles, that brake just rubs and starts to cook itself for some reason. I don't know why, because everything's brand new. So, maybe you guys can give me some advice as to what you think it might be. Otherwise, it's not the end of the world. You just gotta try not to drive it too far. And quite frankly, if that's the only issue she has, then I am absolutely thrilled. So, now that I've given you the quick 1500 mile update on Bessie, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. So like I said before, I've driven her 1500 miles and every single mile has put a smile on my face. However, even though it's a blast to drive, when you're taking off from a stoplight, she can be a little underwhelming. So now that Bessie is a very drivable and reliable machine, let's make her a little more drivable and a little less reliable. I'm talking about pumping up the juice. That's right, from now on, the next few episodes are gonna be dedicated to finding out just how much power we can get out of Bessie. So first things first, I went ahead over to eBay and I got me some governor springs. And yes, this is exactly how they showed up. In a Ziploc baggie and a Sharpie. But I ain't complaining because the reviews were outstanding and it was only 48 bucks. But this is the 3000 or 4000 RPM kit. Uh, quite frankly, I'm not really comfortable trying to go all the way up to 4,000 RPMs quite yet. I want to go ahead and do the valve springs before we try to push this engine that far. So hopefully that'll be for the next episode. But for now, we're going to go ahead and install the 3,000 RPM governor springs. And we're going to go ahead and cut the fuel plate to make it a zero plate. So not a whole lot. We're not going too crazy. But we're going to see how much power gains we can get. So let's go ahead and do a quick 0 to 60 run just so we can see what we're dealing with right now versus what we'll have after we do this. <laughs> So, what did that test drive teach us? Well, it taught me two things. One, I need to stop bank shifting third, otherwise I'm gonna destroy my synchros. And two, it takes Bessie approximately 18 seconds to go from zero to 60 miles an hour. That's honestly slower than I even expected. I expected it to be like maybe 12 seconds. Maybe, at most, but definitely not 18. So, with that being said, I don't see how we can make it any slower. So let's go ahead and at least try to make it faster. <laughs>
Okay, real quick, I just wanted to take a minute and say that this is really weird. Uh, because in all the videos and pictures that I've seen, this little ear that comes out right here is shaped more kind of square with the little lip on it. Whereas this one almost looks more like half of the side profile of a house. So it's just kind of odd. I don't know. Maybe it's different because it's an industrial setup because it came out of the moving truck. Or... I don't know. But either way, we're going to cut it off. So let's do it. Well, that seemed simple enough. Let's go ahead and give it a test drive, hope that it doesn't overfuel and destroy itself, and see if we improved our 0 to 60. Let's get to it. start in second I don't use first at all it's way too low but in second and third gear definitely more responsive uh, would I say it feels faster not necessarily that it feels faster just it feels like the truck has more get up to it but in fourth and fifth gear at least fourth gear is the one that I took all the way to the governor if you were halfway through fourth gear and you put your foot to the floor it would take you a few seconds to hit the governor um, and you wouldn't be going a whole lot faster. Now, now that we've done the modifications, halfway through fourth gear, you put your foot to the floor and you can really feel it pull you forward. Um, and it feels like you're going a lot faster by the time you hit that, that governor. Fifth gear, I got maybe a third of the way into it, and that's when I hit 60. But it felt like fifth gear had a lot more of a power range than it ever has before. Am I happy with it? Absolutely. Am I blown away by it? Not really, it's about what I expected. It doesn't feel faster necessarily, like it's not gonna win any races by any means. But at the same time, it feels a lot more responsive and it feels like it's got a much wider power range now. Whereas before, it's just nothing but torque. You put your foot to the floor and it takes forever to get to where it needs to go. Now it gets there quicker. So there's one more thing that I want to try. Under that little cap right there is something that they call the smoke screw. Now supposedly you can take off that little cap and turn the smoke screw, I think it would be clockwise if you're sitting in the driver's seat, towards the passenger side. And the more you do that, the faster it fuels up. I've heard some people say never go more than five clicks. I've heard some people say you can go 50 clicks without hurting it. So, with that being said, just to see if it makes any difference at all, I'm gonna adjust it 10 clicks, and we'll see how that goes. That's the smoke screw, and you can see it's got those little teeth on it, and those are what we're gonna be turning. But basically, you turn it that way and it will go click, 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 click. And from what I understand, the more you click it, the more, uh, the more fuel you get. Okay. 
Not gonna lie, I kind of lost count. I think that's 10, but I can't be very sure. So I'm just gonna test drive it and let you know how that goes. All the difference in the world. Man. Alright. Let's take it out on the main road and see what she does. curious just to see how much more we can get out of that smoke screw like I said I think it was 10 clicks but I don't know for all I know it could have been 8 could have been 12 but it's not rolling coal at all like it doesn't make any smoke so I know we're not nearly uh, anywhere close to where we could be I don't want to roll coal I don't want to be obnoxious but I would like to see a little bit of something when I'm really getting on so we're gonna try to just a little bit more, just a few more clicks and see what would happen. All right, I think that was about six more clicks. Let's see what that did for it. Oh, yeah <laughs> all right so I would feel 100% comfortable saying that is a mission accomplished when we cut the fuel plate and put in the 3,000 rpm springs I'm not gonna lie it wasn't as noticeable as I had initially hoped it was about what I expected but I hoped for more but the moment we adjusted that smoke screw fuel screw or whatever the heck you want to call it that is what really woke her up now I did mine about 18 clicks I want to say um, could we go more absolutely do I want to go more not really uh, I'm pretty comfortable with where it is for now so looking forward I'd eventually like to put the 60 pound valve springs in that way it can hold much higher rpm um, and then when we do that, we can put the 4,000 RPM springs in the governor. But for now, I am so happy with where it's at. It's, it just made the truck that's already a blast to drive even more fun. It's more responsive. It's got a wider power band now. Just fifth gear alone feels like it has so much more power than it ever has before. And... Well, we're going to have to find a road with a higher speed limit if we want to find out how much it actually holds. But for now, as far as getting to and from work, to and from the store, just having a fun around town truck, I think I got it with Bessie. Finally. Needless to say, I have huge plans for Bessie, but for this episode, that's going to be it for today. I gotta say, it feels absolutely amazing getting back into the shop and making videos again. So I'm really gonna try my hardest to make episodes more consistently. I can't promise anything, but I will be making episodes from here on out. And before I officially sign off, I just wanted to give a shout out to Gaza Performance Garage. Go ahead and check him out, guys. He just started up his YouTube channel. He doesn't have a whole lot of videos yet, but he's trying really hard to get going. So Gaza Performance Garage on YouTube look him up in fact i even th he has merch you can buy stickers and i think t-shirts from him so go ahead and help support a small channel and finally thank you guys so much for watching if you liked what you saw go ahead and show that thumbs up button some love if you didn't like what you saw or you have questions or concerns let me know in the comments section i'd love to hear from you guys and i do try my hardest to respond to every comment and like always, if you want to see what we're getting into in the next episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. So thank you so much again, guys, for watching. 
and I look forward to seeing you next time on another episode of Chuck's Customs.